learning outcomes dear students after studying this module you shall be able to know what is probability learn the applications of probability in events identify the set of conditions where specific rules of probability can be applied and lastly analyze the real time events with respect to probability now students let us start with the introduction of this module aristotle said the probable is what usually happens you can't predict the future but you can use mathematical probability to determine how likely it is that something will or won't happen probability is the measure of likelihood that an event will occur or a statement is true the higher the value of assigned probability with an event more is certainty of the event to occur probability values are given between 0 that is it will not occur or the event will not occur and 1 that is the event will occur genetic ratios are most properly expressed as probabilities for example 3 by 4 colored 1 by 4 white flowers these values may predict the result of each fertilization event in a way that associates the each resulting zygote having the genetic potential for giving rise to a plant with colored flowers is 3 by 4 whereas the potential for becoming white flowered plant is 1 by 4 next what is a random experiment if an experiment is based on the possibility of having more than one outcome and there is no method or possibility for predicting the outcome prior to occurrence of event or experiment the event is termed as a random event for example in living system fertilization of gametes is a random event for such a random experiment a set of all possible outcomes is called a sample space which is denoted by a small s next what is an event a random experiment may result in several outcomes a set of all such outcomes of an experiment with certain characteristic is called an event an outcome which satisfies a particular characteristic is called as favorable outcome and vice versa in terms of events probability can be expressed as p is equals to number of times a particular event occurs divided by total number of trials during which event could have occurred events can further be classified into two subtypes namely independent and mutually exclusive events now students we will take these two subtypes one by one first here is the independent event when the occurrence of two events doesn't affect the probability of occurrence of one or the other form then the two events are said to be independent events mutually exclusive events mutually exclusive are the two events where occurrence of outcome of one excludes the occurrence of outcome of other that is both cannot occur simultaneously next is laws of probability here we will study the very first law that is the product law the law states that the probability of two or more events occurring simultaneously is equal to the product of their individual probabilities two or more events are independent of one another if the outcome of individual event does not affect the outcome of any of the other under considerations let us consider the possible results of an event where you toss a nickel which is denoted by capital n and a penny denoted by capital p simultaneously 
and then examine all possible combinations of heads denoted by capital H and tails denoted by capital T that can occur. The possible outcomes will be PH is to NH which will be further equal to 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and the possible outcome will be 1 by 4. Next PT is to NH which is further equal to 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and the possible outcome will be 1 by 4. PH is to NT which is equal to 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and the resulting outcome will be 1 by 4. PT is to NT which is equal to 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and the resulting outcome will be 1 by 4. The probability of obtaining a head or a tail in the toss of either penny or nickel is 1 by 2 and is unrelated to the outcome of each other. Thus, all four possible combinations are predicted to occur with equal probability. The next law that we will be studying here is the sum law. The sum law states that the probability of obtaining any single outcome where the outcome can be achieved in two or more events is equal to the sum of the individual probabilities of all such events. For example, what is the probability of tossing a penny and nickel and obtaining one head and one tail? In such a case, we do not care whether it is the penny or the nickel that comes up heads provided that the other coin has the alternative outcome too. There are two ways in which the desired outcome can be accomplished. One is pH is to NT and the other one is PT is to NH with each with a probability of 1 by 4 outcome. Thus, according to the sum law, the overall probability in our example is equal to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which is equivalent to 1 by 2. However, the predictions of all possible outcomes are usually realized only with large sample sizes. This implies that if we predict that 9 by 16 of the offspring of a dihybrid cross will express both dominant traits, it is highly unlikely that within a small sample exactly 9 of every 16 offspring will represent that. Instead, the prediction is that of a large number of offspring, approximately 9 by 16 representatives will express this phenotype. The deviation from the predicted ratio in smaller sample sizes is attributed to chance. In biological world chance, factors account at multiple levels such as fertilization of gametes and so on. Though the impact of deviation strictly attributed to chance is diminished with increase in the sample size. Next, we will be studying about the study of probability in genetics. So, first is the selection of individual. The selected trait that is desired to be studied for should be analyzed in individuals on the basis of their phenotypes and genotypes. Following this, individuals with desired trait should be selected for inclusion in study. The next factor that is transmission of gene or chromosome. The genetic basis of inheritance of the trait in question should be known and well understood for studying the trait. It is important to know whether the event can occur independently or is mutually exclusive event. The third parameter is the conditional probability. To calculate the probability of an outcome that is dependent on a specific condition related to that outcome. For example, in the F2 or the filial 2 generation of Mendel's monohybrid cross involving tall and dwarf plants, what is the probability that a tall plant is heterozygous and not homozygous? The condition we have set 
is to consider only filial 2 offspring that is only the tall F2 offspring since we know that all dwarf plants are homozygous because the outcome and specific condition are not independent product law of probability cannot be applied. The likelihood of all such outcomes is referred to as conditional probability. Conditional probability has multiple applications in genetics. Most significantly during the genetic counseling it is possible to calculate the probability denoted by PC that an unaffected sibling of a brother or sister expressing a recessive disorder is a carrier of the disease causing allele that is a heterozygote. Considering that both parents are unaffected but are carriers for the disorder, the calculation of PC can provide valuable insights on the next child being a carrier or normal or will bear the disorder. To calculate PC, we must consider the probability F, the outcome of interest, that of a specific condition in this case being normal that includes the outcome. These independent probabilities are PA for probability of being a heterozygous carrier that receives one recessive allele and one normal allele and PB for probability of not bearing the disorder that is a condition including both homozygous, normal and as well as carrier. So again we have PA which is equivalent to the probability of inheriting at least one dominant allele and the probability will be 1 by 2 PB probability of not bearing disorder that is not having homozygous recessive condition will be 3 by 4. In order to calculate the conditional probability PC, we need to divide PA with PB. Therefore, PC is equivalent to or is equal to PA divided by PB, where it is further equal to 1 by 2 divided by 3 by 4 and the conditional probability outcome will be 2 by 3. Thus, the probability of having either a carrier or homozygous dominant or normal child is about two-thirds. Additionally, probability is only a mathematical model that uses the mentioned principles and predicts theoretical possibilities and there is no certainty that the event will occur. Next is forked line method. Multi-hybrid crosses can be analyzed by treating the cross as if it were separate monohybrid crosses and applying the product rule to calculate the probabilities of each outcome. Remember from your previous modules that the law of independent assortment states that the segregation of one gene does not affect the other. Let us consider an example using forked line method to calculate the probability of each possible phenotype from the cross between yellow and round seed bearing plants. So, if we denote this yellow and round seed bearing plants, so capital Y, small y, capital R, small r with a cross of capital Y, small y, capital R, small r. It means yellow and round in cross with yellow and round. So, the first probability will be 3 by 4 yellow, it means 3 by 4 will be round and 1 by 4 will be wrinkled. In case of 3 by 4 round, 9 by 16 will be yellow and round and in case of 1 by 4 wrinkled, 3 by 16 will be yellow and wrinkled. The next possibility or probability will be of 1 by 4 being green in color. So, if in this we have 3 by 4 round, it means they will give a total probability of 3 by 16 being green and round and if we have 1 by 4 wrinkled, then the total probability will be 1 by 16 green and wrinkled. Note that the resultant ratio will be in the ratio of 
9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 which abides by Mendel's law of independent assortment. Next is binomial theorem. The binomial formula can be applied only in very specific set of circumstances and determine probabilities of sets of events. Binomial expression can be applied to calculate the probability that a set of event will consist of so many of one type of event and so many of other type of event and the order of events does not matter. If the order does not matter, the product rule is usually the way applied. Each of the events in the set can have only two possible outcome. Example, let capital B, a family of five has three girls and two boys. Then the binomial formula for calculating the probability of S type A and T type B events is N factorial divided by S factorial multiplied by T factorial which whole is then multiplied by p raised to the power s and q raised to the power t, where n is total number of events, s is number of type A events, t is number of type B events, p is probability of type A event, q is probability of type B event and which is always true s plus t is equals to n and p plus q is equals to 1. The factorial function n factorial which is also meant as n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 and so on till multiplied by a factor of 1. For example, if I am saying 5 factorial then this 5 factorial can be represented as or is equivalent to 5 multiplied by 4, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1, which is further equivalent to 120. Now, students, let us take up some examples regarding probability. Let us consider the solved examples to understand the applications of probability. The first example is, what is the probability that four children born in a family are all girls? Considering the probability of birth of a girl child, only two possible outcomes are there. Hence, it is 1 by 2. This will apply in the same manner to all the four births, each having a probability of 1 by 2. In order to calculate the probability for four children, all being girls, we need to apply the product rule. Therefore, the probability of having all four children being girls is 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2. That is 1 by 2 multiplied 4 times which is further equivalent to 1 by 16. Next example, one child in every 10,000 births in the US has a genetic disease called phenylketonuria that is PKU. What is the probability that the next child born in a particular hospital will have PKU? You can assume that the probability of the disease is uniform throughout the US. So, it means probability is equal to 1 by 10,000. Next, suppose a PKU child has just been born in this hospital. What is the probability that the next child born in the same hospital will have PKU, P that is probability is equals to 1 by 10,000 that is birth of two children is based on the independent sets of events that are not correlated with each other. So, the fact that one child has already been born with PKU does not change the probability for the next one. Next question, what is the probability that two children born in a row will have PKU and the answer is p is equals to 1 by 10,000 multiplied by 1 by 10,000, which is equivalent to a factor of 1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 8. This question though appears same as that of the part second that I have already explained, but we are asked for the probability that the 
first child and the next child with both PKU instead of considering only the second birth. This is why product rule has been applied. The chance of two rare events happening at the same time is exceedingly rare assuming that they are independent events. It is also noteworthy that in the second part the first child has already been born while in the third part neither of the two events has taken place yet. Moving on to the next example. Assuming that the probability of having a girl on any given birth is 1 by 2. Calculate the probability that a family of 4 will consist of 3 boys and 1 girl. The answer to this question can be easily calculated by writing out all the possible birth orders and determining what fraction of the families fit the required family makeup. The possible birth orders will be GGGG, triple GB, double GBG, double GBB, GBGB, G, G, B, G, B, G, double B, G, G, triple B, B, triple G, B, double G, B, B, G, B, G, B, G, double B, double B and double G, double B, G, B, triple B, G and four times B. In all the possible birth orders, the possible outcomes will have four contain three boys and one girl so that the probability is 4 by 16 which is equivalent to 1 by 4 and which is further equivalent to a factor of 0 0.25. The same conclusion can also be reached by using the binomial formula that is n factorial divided by s factorial multiplied by t factorial which in whole is further multiplied by p raised to the power s and q raised to the power t. So, if we put the respective values where n is equal to 4, s is equal to 3, t is equal to 1, p is equal to 1 by 2, small s is equal to 3, q is equal to 1 by 2 and t is equal to 1. So, the possible outcome will be 4 by 16 which is equivalent to 1 by 4. Consider that the true probability of having a boy or girl on any one birth is not quite equal. The actual proportion of girls at birth is about 0 0.49 rather than 0 0.5. Taking this relatively more accurate value, recalculate the probability of having a family of three boys and one girl. So, again using the binomial formula, we will put in the formula which is equivalent to n factorial divided by s factorial multiplied by t factorial which in whole is further multiplied by p raised to the power s and q raised to the power t. By putting in the values in the formula we have 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial multiplied by 1 factorial which in whole is further multiplied by a factor of 0 0.51 to the power 3 and 0 0.49 to the power of 1 which is equivalent to 0 0.26. Now dear students, let us summarize this module. Probability is the measurement of likelihood whether an event will take place or a statement is true. Probability values are given between 0 that is the event will not occur and 1 that is the event will occur. If an experiment is based on the possibility of having more than one outcome and there is no method or possibility for predicting the outcome prior to occurrence of event or experiment, the event is termed as random event. The product rule states that the probability of two or more events occurring simultaneously is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. The sum rule of probability states that the probability of obtaining any single outcome where the outcome can be achieved in two or more events is equal to the sum of the individual probabilities of all such events. If 
the probability of an outcome that is dependent on a specific condition related to that outcome, then outcome and the specific conditions are not independent. As a result, product law of probability cannot be applied. The likelihood of all such outcomes is referred to as the conditional probability. The binomial expression can be applied only in very specific set of circumstances and determine probabilities of sets of events in order to calculate the probability that a set of events will consist of so many of one type of event and so many of other or another type of event irrespective of the order of occurrence of events. Thank you.